Lately, we've been hearing a lot about the Carswell plan structure, and it's no surprise as Ding Liren has been scoring heavily with it. He has made two and a half points out of three, and this classical structure is becoming Ian's Nepomniachtchi nightmare. In this video, I'm going to go through the ins and outs of this classical variation that mainly occurs from the Queen's Gambit decline, but that can also occur from a number of other opening lines, especially the London system on the Caro Can exchange variation. I'm going to explain the basic ideas of the Coswell structure by showing two games. First, I'm going to explain the minority attack with the classical Alexander Kotov versus Ludek Pakman. And later, I'm going to explain the central break, E3, E4, with the game Ivanchuk versus Lazar Brusson. Let's start. D4, E6, C4, Knight F6, Knight C3, D5, and Bishop G5. Instead, c takes d5, e takes d5, and bishop g5 is the modern move order that warranties the Carswell variation of the Queen's Gambit decline. Bishop g5 is a classical line that maintains the tension between those pawns. So after bishop e7, e3, castle, knight f3, knight bd7, and white keeps the tension with rook c1. After a6, black is trying to capture on c4, playing b5 and bishop b7, reaching a nice position. So white trades. And we reach the Carlsberg structure. We have a pawn majority on the king side, e3, f2, g2, h2, versus those three pawns. But the reality is that we cannot claim that, that this would advance in any time soon because d5 is a very strong pawn that controls e4 besides the semi-open e-file makes the advance e4 difficult so playing for this pawn majority is is not easy okay for black is something similar because playing c5 for example and let's see after Bishop d3, c5, and c4 would be something they they like, they, they would enjoy. If something like b5, knight e5, bishop b7, they have this pawn majority and now they have a, advanced. But against c5, we simply take, leaving the d5 pawn isolated. So this is the reason that why both flanks refrain from advancing their pawn majority. So after rook e8, castle c6, queen c2, knight f8, and white starts trying to move the pawns in the queen side. The rook is already on c1 and don't, white doesn't want to move it again. Normally, rook b1 would be the way, so you can play b4 and a4. But Kotov has another plan. a3, g6, b4, knight e6, and here he takes advantage of this uh, opportunity. Bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, and a4. In this way, the b4 pawn is not attacked any longer, as the bishop is on f6. Bit knight g7, a Typical maneuver to get rid of the so-called bad bishop. And b5. White already carried out the minority attack. He takes b5, a takes b5, bishop f5, and after bishop a5, knight f5, b takes e6, b takes e6. White's operation has been a success. Why? Because white is only having a pawn island, a pawn group, a big pawn group, while blank has two, this one and this one. And c6 is weakened and in an open file. This by itself, it's not clear that it would be enough for a victory. So you have to try to um, create a second weakness. 
So, but let, let's see how the game continued. Knight a4, rook c8, queen c5. Now, this is a bit weird, but white, I guess, intends to get to b6 or to a7. After knight d6, we have to take care of c4, knight d2, rook e7, and rook b1. So, white is smoothly trying to bring all, all its pieces, all his pieces, to the queen side. Rook b7, takes on b7, and queen a7. After knight d6, black is already threatening rook a8, and the white plays queen a6, trying to answer rook a8 by queen takes c6. After queen c7, rook c1, bishop d8, black pieces are tied up to the defense of the c6 pawn, but it's not clear how to um, increase the pressure. Now a knight on b4, e5 would be okay, but it's not, it's not simple, as we cannot move this knight because then knight c4 could be a nice reply for black. So uh, after bishop d8, knight c5, and queen a5. Why black wants to get rid of the queens because the queen is too active. Luckily, the knight defends the rook, so there is nothing hanging. Queen d3, queen b5, g3, improving the position of the king. Bishop b6, rook b1. Now, after the trade, white is a bit better in this endgame. Bishop a5, knight b3, and bishop d8. Okay, this kind of ending is... Uh, pretty one, one one way, you know, it's black won't ever win. So this is what we aim in this kind of variation, and very often we will manage to to capture this pawn. Of course, this is a grandmaster level game, and black resistance is pretty tough. Let's see how how the game continued. Knight b c five, bishop b seven, knight d seven, rook c seven. Knight b8. He's making a an original maneuver, intending to play knight e5, knight c4, rook a1. Now rook a6 is threatened. Rook c8, knight d7, rook c7. Check. Okay, at least the rook invades white and black position. King g7, knight e5, knight takes, knight takes, bishop d6. Knight d3, and this is a famous position. Black has got only one witness, as I, as I said before. And the way to create a second witness, it's usually in this kind of position, g4, to gain some space and to restrict the h pawn. So black was forced to play, instead of king f6, the natural king f6, h5 would have been the right move and probably the game would have ended in a draw at the end, but who knows. Okay, after king f6, g4, strong move, king e6, now white will be pressing on black's position for a long while. Rook b7, check, rook e7, white doesn't want to trade rooks, he just want to to confuse black, f6, h4, in this way we prepare h5 sometimes, but sometimes g5 can be also a good move. Rook b7, king f3, rook f7, check again, he covers with rook, rook d8, and the rook becomes active again. So there are several ways for white to continue, but I guess this is the most testing King e7, rook c8. There was a little trap. If rook h8, then black plays bishop takes e5. And of course, white couldn't capture on h7 because after king e6, he's absolutely lost. Black, black won a piece. After rook c8, bishop takes e7, c5, sorry. Instead, rook c7, good met rook h8 and now this is winning because bishop takes then check and 
check. You are taking the rook with a pawn, extra pawn, and a winning position. So after rook c8, bishop takes c5, d takes c5, king d7, rook h8, king e6, and rook d8. The, the material is even, but black is under severe pressure because the, the pawn on c6 will need protection. And as we'll see, even when the black rook is not entirely passive, white king will be able to break through e5. And this will give white a decisive attack, a decisive advantage, sorry. G takes f6, f, f takes g5, sorry, h takes g5, king f7, king g3. Well done, because king f4 was answered by check, and in case of king e5, rook e4 mate. So instead, king g3, slowly but surely, and f3. Now e4 is protected, now the king is ready to come to e5. Rook a3, trying to trade pawns, king f4, check, king e5, rook a3 again, and now white is winning after rook takes c6, rook takes e3, and capturing the d5 pawn. The, the idea is simple. Now the game continues with rook d3. If instead black captured, then check, king d8, rook takes h7, and black is lost because the g6 pawn is almost about to fall and this already one uh, one pawn down if rook f5 then king d6 and as the the black, white is threatening mate black cannot capture on g5 so after king d3 rook d3 king e4 rook c3 white improved the position a bit before playing rook c8 Rook c7, sorry, rook c1, rook c7, king d8, capture on h5, or h7, rook c5, king f7, and Pac-Man resigned. There is nothing he can do to avoid rook f6. And now I'll show the central strategy popularized by Mikhail Botvinnik with a game of Vasily Ivanchuk against Lazaro Brusson, 2006. Let's see the, the game. d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, d5, c takes d5, the modern move order to get the, to the crossbow variation, and it has the advantage of letting these knights go to e2, as we will see soon. e takes d5, bishop g5, c6, sometimes trying to play bishop f5, Black can't play bishop f5 right away because of queen b3. After c6, though, bishop f5 can, can be played as queen b3 is answered with queen b6. So a lot of players now, after c6, play queen c2 in order to avoid queen bishop f5. But Ivanchuk didn't. He played e3, bishop e7, Brusson wasn't interested in bishop f5, Bishop d3, knight bd7, knight g2, and here we are. We place the knight on e2 so we can focus in building a center with f3, e4. The idea is seems straightforward, but it isn't. We have to be very, very careful when we decide to start building the center. There are some, some things that can go wrong, so I will explain it now. Castle, queen c2, rook e8. And short castle. Sometimes um, white players prefer to castle long, and this is something interesting because they play h3, g4, and okay, knight g3, and bring all the pieces to the king's side. This is also very promising. But of course, black can counter with with uh, pawns advance, uh, advancing the queen side pawns as well. So castle is more 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 cautious, but really interesting. Knight f8, f3, bishop e6, and here we can, for the first time, we can play e4, but I wouldn't recommend this move here. Because uh, eventually pref prefer to play rook 81. If we play e4, d takes e4, f takes e4, knight g4, 
And after trading on e7, queen takes e7, black is forking with queen knight e3, and after defending this fork, then c5 is a very annoying move because our pawns get blocked. We'll, we'll be very tough advancing those pawns, even if it, this one is pa passed, but queen d6, knight e5, or the other knight to e5. And this is something I couldn't, I couldn't like to play as white. So after rook d1, white is building its position and will play e4 in the best possible moment, rook c8, and keeps waiting. Another idea is to play h3, followed by e4, and then knight, knight g4 is not, is, is not available. This is interesting. So after rook c8, sometimes c5 can come, king h1, knight g6, and eventually played a3, the mysterious a3. He might, might be wondering if switching to the queen side is a good idea, but after knight d7, trying to free a bit black's position, bishop f4, improving, uh, taking advantage of the h7 uh, undefended pawn. Yes, now a6, of course, knight f4 is answered with bishop takes h7, king h7, h8, knight takes f4, and of course, g6 is not possible. So next move, our bishop will go out. So after bishop f4, a6, bishop g3, and Brusson tried to hit white center, trying to activate its rook, and Ivanchuk tried to open the game. This is the critical position of the game. Uh, Brusson made a blunder. After knight f6, he got outplayed by e5 and f4. This is um, the, the dream for black players in this kind of positions, for white players, sorry. And he, he could have played instead c4. Perhaps he was afraid of e takes d5, c takes d3, queen takes d3, and here he could have played bishop h3, giving returning the piece, but um, getting a nice... Okay, uh, at least the, the white king is a bit open, and... Uh, this pawn is, is weak. Well, I don't think this pawn will get too far. So this was a really strong move, but Brusson instead blunder with knight f6. After e5, knight d7, f4, and this is the white strategy dream come true. c4, bishop f5, knight d f8, and there are several ways to, to keep improving the position, but Ivanchuk was really strong. Bishop h3. Then f5 is on the way, forcing bishop takes h3, g takes h3, and well, the pawns are going to advance. Look, this d5 pawn is really weak. It's attacked by the knight, but some soon will be attacked by some other pieces. Knight h8, black's position is a disaster. f5, bishop g5, Bishop f4, h6, knight g3. Now the, the line, the second line is clear to play queen g2, rook c7, queen g2, rook d7. Black is completely destroyed. You cannot play a game of chess with a knight on h8. Knight h5. Now h4 is threatened. f6 and e6. And okay, Brusson sacrifices the piece, trying to bring his pieces back to the game. h4 and king, queen e8, queen takes g7, king takes g7, h takes g5, knight takes d5, and black is absolutely lost. There is nothing he can do. He takes on d5, trying to stay an exchange down, but after rook g1, knight g6, queen f5, black resigned. There's no chance at all. d5 is coming, rook, rook, rook g6 is threatened, if everything is a complete disaster. 
So this is white's strategy, white's central strategy that complements pretty well the minority attack. So if you feel like learning more about this uh, structure, comment and tell me your your thoughts. I'll, I'll appreciate your feedback. And if you like the video, please subscribe, give smash the like. And okay, let's see you next time.